Now let's build your vocabulary so you're especially familiar with all the terms you'll encounter in Okta workflows. A flow is a workflow containing a set of instructions you created. It's represented by a trigger, an action, or series of actions, and any logic functions you choose. Each step is represented by cards, and those steps are executed in left to right order in the console. The console is the user interface provided to you for configuring connectors and creating flows. A connection is an instance of a connector, and a connector is a pre built framework that leverages another cloud based application's API so that your flow can access it as well as your stored data on that platform. Each flow consists of a set of cards. You can think of each card as a step in that flow or a unit of functionality. Each card will contain an event, action, or logic function. Events allow you to monitor for changes within your cloud application. When a change has been detected, the flow will begin. Actions instruct the flow to perform an operation using your chosen cloud application. Actions can pull information from that cloud application and make changes. Finally, functions can set values or manipulate data within a flow. By understanding these terms, you can understand each of the tools you can use to create powerful automations in Okta workflows. Now let's take a deeper dive into flows and how they work. Before setting out to craft your flow, it is critical to plan ahead. When thinking about your problem in the context of a flow, try asking yourself some questions to get the ball rolling. What connectors do I need and are they available? Do I have credentials to establish connectors? What am I trying to accomplish? When and how do I want to run this flow? What data do I need coming in? What data do I need coming out? What fields do I need? What transformations or manipulations must I make to the data in my flow? What are the goals for my flow and what does success look like? Exactly how you approach or construct your flow is up to you but it's important to have a plan and begin with the end result in mind. Some people like to start with an event and move forwards, while others begin with the final actions of a flow and work backwards. As we learn, we'll move in a linear fashion, from left to right, in the same direction that workflows execute themselves when their events trigger. Of course, once you're an Okta workflows expert, you can diverge from the linear path if a different process suits you better. When creating a linear flow, you'll perform the following general actions in this order. 1. Set up your connections. 2. Create a new flow. 3. Add actions and functions to your flow. 4. Test your flow. 5. If your flow meets your goals for success, activate it. Step 1. Set up your connections. All right, now we can get started and create some connections. To set up your first connection, go to Settings and choose New Connection. Choose a channel and authorize it by filling out the required fields associated with that particular connection. As an example, let's take a look at an Okta connection. It requires a connection nickname, a domain, a client ID, and a client secret. Once you have all that information filled in, you can click Create to save your connection. You can follow the same process for all of your connections. You'll know your connection has been set up correctly if you see a green checkmark. Step 2. Create a new flow. Begin by clicking on the blue button labeled New Flow. From here, you'll be prompted to pick either an event, action, or function. To start off the flow, I'll add an event for my Smartsheet connection. Step 3. Add actions and functions. Remember, actions represent the things you can do with your connectors. For example, when you select Smartsheet as your connector, you'll see all the actions that are available to you. Create a new sheet, list all your sheets, read a row, etc. When your flow collects data that isn't in the exact format you need, you can use a function to change that. Okta Workflows offers several different types of functions for working with text strings, performing math equations, creating and sorting lists, parsing data objects, and more. If you need to replace specific text, average a set of numbers, organize a list of email addresses, or make other similar types of changes to your data, you can rely on functions to get the job done. Step 4. Test your flow. You should always test your flow. Even if a step of your flow doesn't cause an explicit error, small mistakes can be made during setup that can result in a different outcome than the one you want. By testing your flow, you can look at the outcome and determine whether or not it meets your goals for success before you activate it. You should perform tests regularly throughout each stage of the flow building process. There are many ways to test a flow. 
Let's start with testing an individual card. Find the card you want to test and hover over the play icon. It will say test this card. Click it to run a test on that specific card. To test the entire flow, you can click the test flow icon in the options bar. You can save and test your entire flow by clicking on the save and test button at the far right of your flow. As a part of testing, your flow can have its own history, and that history can help you resolve any issues that may arise in the flow building process. Your flow history shows when and how your data is retrieved in process, so you can clearly see what's happening during each step. When building a flow, this feature isn't active by default, but you can enable it by either saving your flow for the first time, or by clicking Flow History, and then clicking Enable Save Data on the right-hand side. Note that clicking on each time index link on the right of the screen will give you a trace of that individual flow history, like a time machine for your flows. Once you're happy with your flow and it meets your goals, you can complete the process with step 5. Activate your flow. All you have to do is find the toggle button marked Flow is Off, click on it, and wait for it to change to Flow is On. Now your flow will run any time your trigger event occurs. Before we wrap up this lesson, Let's learn how to keep your flows organized in your folders so you can find what you're looking for. Your folders contain all your existing flows and tables. Within any folder, you can perform the following actions. 1. You can turn any given flow on or off. 2. You can click on a column header which will help you sort your flows by their app, which flows are on or off, the names of the flows or tables, the authors of each flow, or the date when each flow was created. 3. You can also search by clicking the field next to the magnifying glass icon. 4. The last two icons give you control over how your flows are presented in either grid or list view. It's a good idea to set up a plan to organize your flows up front. That way you won't have any trouble finding them later on when you've created a larger number of flows. That's all we have to cover in this lesson. In the next one, we'll take a deeper dive into actions and events.